there, you writer you. Abstracts, what are they? How do you write them? What makes a good abstract? What are the common mistakes in abstracts? How many questions can I ask before I get into my super clear instructional lesson on research abstracts? <laughs> Just one. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's go. What is an abstract? An abstract is typically a 150 to 500 word overview of a research paper's main points from each of its major sections. The abstract is always the first section of a research paper. A strong abstract tells the reader what to expect in the research paper, summarizes the contributions of the research, has just enough quantitative results, is fully self-contained, makes sense all by itself, and it attracts the reader to read the full paper. Goals of an abstract. Goal one, people will read the abstract of your research paper to determine if the full research paper is relevant, trustworthy, or interesting for their purpose. Goal two, the abstract will indicate how technical or general the research is. Goal three, academic journals and academic conferences screen abstracts before moving the full research paper onto the review stage. Well-written and relevant abstracts will often lead to the research paper getting a full review. Goal four, many academics will keep a copy of your abstract after reading the full paper. This helps them to remember the paper's main points. Goal five, abstracts that select and use their keywords effectively will benefit from search engine optimization, an internet feature that makes your paper easy to find when searching online. These keywords also enable your research to be indexed accurately in research databases. Goal six, abstract cross-referencing. This helps researchers discover new research areas and topics that were previously unknown when they began their research. Goal seven, the abstract sells your research work to the research community. When should you write your research abstract? Abstracts are typically written last after the rest of your paper has been drafted. Your article determines your abstract. Your abstract does not determine your article. Abstracts differ by field. Social science or scientific research abstracts may contain the motivation, problem, method, results, and discussion. Abstract papers for humanities may include the problem or hypothesis, background, and conclusion. Language style for the abstract. Search and use exact phrases so they will turn up at the top of the search listing. Point by point language style is acceptable. Be concise. Short sentences that contain only one point are easy for the readers to follow. Be authoritative. Correct example. We implemented a novel approach and evaluated efficiency gains. Weak example. We attempted to try Use clear and specific language. Strong example, a 24% increase in. Weak example, a significant improvement in. Consider the viewpoints of a diverse readership when writing your abstract. Rarely will the readers have the same background knowledge as you. Abstract length. Thesis abstracts, conference abstracts, and academic journal abstracts will have different word count requirements. Typically, abstracts are required to be between 150 and 500 words long, but be sure to check with your school's thesis guidelines, the conference guidelines, or the instructions for authors for your target journal. Let's take a look at a well-written abstract. Then we will identify which sentences represent which sections of the research paper. And lastly, we will identify the well-written elements of the abstract. Approximately 15 to 25% of the U.S. working population is classified as high risk for job stress. This type of stress is known to exert a psychological toll on workers. Less is known about the impact of job stress on physical health and on how current findings translate to clinically relevant outcomes in everyday life, such as susceptibility to the common cold. In an ongoing daily diary study, 68 adults completed measures of job stress and upper respiratory infection, URI, symptoms every day for eight weeks. Preliminary analyses show that males who had busier days at work on average also endorsed a greater number of total URI symptoms. Additionally, males who reported lower perceived job security and less supervisor support 
were sick with upper respiratory infections on more days across the study than those with greater job security and supervisor support. Among females, endorsing more busy days, whether at home or at work, was associated with greater endorsement of URI symptoms. The findings expand our understanding of links between job stress and immune functioning by elucidating effects on clinically relevant health outcomes. Let's identify the parts of this research paper in the abstract. The introduction section is represented in the first two sentences. The methodology section comes next. The results section has a big representation in this abstract with three sentences. And lastly, the discussion section is represented in the last sentence. Now, let's identify the well-written aspects of this abstract. This abstract follows the research paper structure, uses common key terms and jargon, tells the reader what to expect in the research, summarizes the contributions of research, attracts the reader to read the full paper, has just enough quantitative results, is fully self-contained, makes sense all by itself, uses concise language, uses exact phrases like job stress and working population, uses point-by-point -point language style, uses concise language as seen here in the sentence representing the methodology, uses clear and specific language as seen here in sentence one. And that's all. At this point in the video, we have learned a lot about the elements of a well-written abstract, abstract goals, and language style of the abstract. Now, let's look at some common mistakes for abstracts. Don't make these mistakes. Mistake number one, not enough attention to writing. The abstract is usually the first thing people read before going through an entire article. If the abstract is not well written, the readers will not read your entire paper. Mistake number two, English grammar or syntax errors. If there are grammar errors, the reader will not trust your research findings. Mistake three, withholding the main points or concept to catch the reader's attention. Some abstract writers deliberately hold back some or all of the key information of their research to provoke the reader to read the entire article. Abstracts should be factual and on point. They are not advertisements. Mistake four, using the first sentence of an article as the first line of the abstract. A clear sign of sloppy, lazy work is recycling sentences from your paper in your abstract section. Mistake five, including references. Never put any references in your abstract unless specifically required by the publisher. Mistake six, wasting introduction sentences. Lead sentences should be clear and specific, not too general. Mistake seven, referencing a table, figure, or any part of the main document. Get ready for some abstract writing bonus tips. Get your ideas from abstracts in top tier peer reviewed journals and apply them to your abstract. Emulate their style and apply those suitable to your own paper. Observe key points that the authors selected to use in their abstracts to be published at your target journal. Have professors, colleagues, and editors give feedback on a draft of your abstract and revise your abstract using that feedback. Woo! We covered a lot in this video, but now you are an abstract writing expert. If you enjoyed this free content, please click like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll read them and reply. If you're still here, you might be interested in the University English Hub's published videos on all sections of academic research papers. Enjoy.